I'm the Beer City Bruiser, and you're tuning into one of my favorite sports, Drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking Moe's. I'm your host here, Big Mo. Um, if you're watching YouTube, like, subscribe. Leave, uh, turn on the notifications because May is one busy month and mostly going to be on Spotify, but you can find us on Apple and Google Podcasts too. I am extremely excited today because we got with me Beer City Bruiser. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Like I said, I got this up and going may is turning out to be a pretty busy month i've already had some pretty nice guests on so far i had uh, me being the tag team wrestling fan that i am i've had uh the sats on oh cool and uh not too long ago had uh, actually had carrie silken on oh yeah carrie's a good guy I miss oh him. yeah no he, he was a fun guest. We had to cut it a little bit short, but, you know, hey, I got to have him on. Yep. But uh, one thing I like to do to kind of start it off is ask, what got you started as a fan? And then also lead into, like, you're starting wrestling. Uh, I became a fan um, when I was a kid around seven years old. My uncle took me to a, a local fair and the AWA was there mm. and in the main event Bruiser Brody was in it and he came mm. brawling right past me and I remember looking up and seeing him and you know I'm only seven so he looked you know 12 feet tall and he had the blood and the sweat mm. and just everything and I was like hooked from then on like right then and there I was a huge fan and uh, mm. I tried finding everything I could with Brody uh, Brody was the end all for me and Mm. I just couldn't get enough of them. So that's how I got in like Japanese wrestling and Puerto Rican wrestling and Texas wrestling and all that. Mm. And then uh, I be became a wrestler when uh, all my friends knew I was a big wrestling fan. And we used to joke around, you know, we'd watch the pay-per-views and stuff. Then we'd go out in the yard and hit each other with stop signs and garbage <laughs> cans and just the stupid shit you're supposed to, you know, you're not supposed to do. And um, yeah. at one of these parties we were at, a guy goes, hey, have you ever thought about being a wrestler? I'm like, man, that would be awesome. So he goes, well, my neighbor, they just had a ring set up in our yard and the news came out and they were trying to convince backyard wrestlers to be like professional wrestlers. I can introduce you to him. I said, yeah, mm. his name was Jet Bennett. So 10 o'clock at night, I'm drunk off my ass. I knock on his door and talk to him and he gives <laughs> me a list of like uh, just people to contact to get in the wrestling. And one of the guys' his name was Trevor Adonis, and he happened to live mm. just like five minutes from me. So I oh. walk into Trevor's gym and say, hey, I want to be a pro wrestler. And he says, I'll tell you what, you can do a fantasy camp, you know, cost 150 bucks, it's supposed to be two hours, show up at this time with the money, yada, yada, yada. Like, okay, so I show up that day, pay my money, and my two hours turns into four and a half hours. Cause I just started picking up on it and he was, he was so excited. He talked to me more and more and more. And he started, you know, I, he's like, is how much I charge for training? I'll help you out. After about two years, I started doing the Harley race week long camps. Oh, okay. And Harley, Harley took an interest in me right away. And he's like, Hey, you get a scholarship yeah. to the Academy. Come on down, you, you know, and, and do it. And so finally I, I did it and I was down there for, I think six years, five or six years. Um, studying Ooh. with Harley. So I always say I went to high, uh, grade school and high school with Trevor, and then I went to college with Harley. Ah, pretty good. He, oh, he froze up there for a second. But, yeah, no, that's awesome. I know a bunch of the guys I know out here in Omaha have uh, mentioned about going out there for that. Uh, I believe uh, Duke Cornell, he's – talked about it there's another guy that i know you've faced off with before 
Brandon Juarez, or as he's more popularly known, Donnie Pepper Cricket. Yep, I know Donnie. Oh, yeah, he was actually the best man at my wedding. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm really yeah, good friends with Donnie. Donnie's a good guy. Since I came back on the Indies, I, I, it just so happens that every time I do a Midwest loop, we're always on the same show. So it's a good guy to hang out with at That's the show. Awesome. good guy to hang out at the bars afterwards. He's just a good guy overall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. He, he introduced me to my wife. So I was like, when I got around to asking, I'm like, eh, you earned the job. <laughs> nice but yeah um one thing a lot of people might know you from is your time in ring of honor uh-huh. um we talked a little bit about me having carrie silken on the sats were there in the very early days do you got any like i was gonna start talking a little bit about road stories you got any good stories from your time there with ring of honor oh i got lots of stories ring of honor uh, the locker room that we had was probably the best locker room i've ever been a part of um the word family is thrown around a lot but that that locker room was family um the hardest part about it being shut down wasn't necessarily the wrestling part of it. It was not seeing those guys every weekend. Mm. Um, and now it's weird. It's now every indie show I do, at least one guy from that locker room's there. So it's like, awesome, you know, get to see my buddy and stuff. Um, yeah, but uh, one of my favorite stories actually is with uh, Brian Malonis and I traveled a lot, obviously. And uh, we stopped at a Whataburger. We were in Texas. And mm. – um, one of the managers came up and started talking to us how he was a huge wrestling fan and yeah. he loves wrestling and all that. And if we asked, we knew John Cena and you know, the normal things. And he, <laughs> yeah. he said, Oh yeah, well, I work here at Whataburger. So if you guys need anything and you could tell he was like mentally challenged. So we were being real yeah. nice and trying to help and stuff. Well, then his dad came to pick him up and his dad was a huge wrestling fan. So his dad came over and kind of recognized us. And the first thing his dad does is he starts massaging Malonis's shoulders. <laughs> and we're, we're talking to him, just being nice. And this guy is constantly massaging Brian's shoulders. This is going on for like five, ten minutes to the point where, like, it's getting kind of awkward. He's, you know, right. yeah. he, he leaves. The guy leaves to go check on his son because his son had to go clock out or something. So the guy leaves. And yeah. I look at Brian. I'm like, what? What was that? <laughs> Brian's like I have no idea the guy comes back and starts massaging his shoulders again talking to us <laughs> we're like okay so the guy leaves we're like okay we're getting ready to leave and Brian and I we don't bet money we bet cases of beer so I said I'll ah, bet you a case yeah. of beer I said whoever lo- if, if I lose this bet tonight I buy the beer if you lose you buy he's like okay I said I bet you when we leave that guy's gonna touch you in, in some way I think he's gonna hug you he's gonna Shake your hand. He's going to do something. <laughs> so, yeah. So as we're leaving, we're saying goodbye to everybody. And the guy goes in, he shakes my hand. And I look at Brian and Brian's, you know, nodding his head at me like, no. And the guy goes in and pulls <laughs> Brian in, gives him a big hug and a kiss in the cheek and says, it's real nice meeting you. We leave. So Brian's like, all right, I'll go to the store. It's up here. <laughs> I'm like, I told you, man. I told you. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I know I've had I've had some entertaining stuff with some of my friends from around here. They uh, a few of them did shows up in Fargo all throughout North Dakota really. But uh, one time I went and I actually got to be special guest ring announcer for their match and I actually posted about it on Twitter not that long ago. But anyways, We're at the after party, and there's, uh, well, now Ruby Soho was on the card that night, so I'm hanging out with all of them, and the bar had apparently a karaoke night, and for me to get up for karaoke, I have to be pretty, well, fucking hammered, and (laughs) the, the Puddle of Mud song, She Fucking Hates Me, came on, and I'm like, wait, what is, I'm over there looking at the screen and before I know it, one of the people that was actually up there 
shoves the microphone in my face and I'm just like, yeah, I can't talk it. <laughs> nice. But yeah, no, plenty of good times. Um, what were, uh, well, a little more on Ring of Honor. What were your, some of your thoughts on how things turned out? I know a lot of people are kind of glad that it was Tony Khan that ended up buying Ring of Honor and the tape library and everything and not a certain other uh, promotion, I guess. I, I was shocked. Like, I, we all found out when everybody found out, you know, live on that Wednesday when he came out and made the announcement, you know, um, that's that's the best way to describe it. Is I was shocked. It was like, oh, this is happening. Okay. Um, I, if I knew it was for sale, it's cool. I don't really care who bought it, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's not going to be the same Ring of Honor that it used to be you because that that locker room was so close and so tight towards yeah. the end, you know. And and we did all those no fan shows and. Mm. We're all real close now. Like what? Five of those guys are on the current roster. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying the yeah. current roster isn't good. They got a good yeah. roster over there. Oh yeah, it's, it's not the same. So, you I know, can, I, I, I hope, I hope, it, I hope it does well. You know, I can't, yep. can't do nothing but be positive. You know. Yep. Yeah, nope. I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, that you pretty much confirmed everything that I'd been hearing from a lot of different people about, you know, you finding out the same way pretty much everybody did when Mr. Khan there came out and kind of announced it to the world. Um, I know I, for one, am, if anybody in wrestling was going to buy it, he's probably one that I, I think would do some, pretty good stuff with it and not just let the active promotion kind of die off and just use it for the tape library. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Like there's, there's so much up in the air that nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, only the future can tell. I hope it survives, mm -hmm. but if it doesn't, it, it died. We had a really good run at the end, man. Like we gave it our all. Mm -hmm. So no, if, it is just a tape, if, there. if it is just a tape library, cool. If it lives on, cool. Like wrestling's fun and, and the yeah. more wrestling, the better. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And that's kind of leading into something that else that I wanted to talk about was um the current state of wrestling, because a lot of people have talked to me about how they feel like it's it's maybe not as popular as it was back in like attitude era days, but it's definitely probably about as healthy as it's ever been with like the sheer amount of choices, like pretty much any day of the week you can find something. And if you're, if you're looking, you'll find, something that suits you what are some of your thoughts on like how the current state of things with wrestling is going i i think it's great i mean there's there's more wrestling now and more accessibility to wrestling than there ever has been i mean oh, yeah. you can literally on your phone watch wrestling 24 7 whether it be wwe aew wcw ecw ring of honor impact tna indies it doesn't matter mm -hmm. like japanese wrestling english wrestling mexican mm -hmm. wrestling like you there's so much out there and the current state is great cool that's more work for the boys and, and the girls yeah. you know like and, and if you're a wrestling fan man i grew up when you had a tape trade you know you had to wait <laughs> you heard about a great match oh, yeah. in japan you had to wait two weeks for it to get over here that's what that's the air I grew up in. But now you can just click on your phone. Same here. Yeah. And now you can just click on your phone, like you yeah. know, you get it. So that, oh, that's yeah. a good thing, man. Like I think it's great. Oh, yeah. And no, it, I and know there's so many different types of wrestling out there too. Like mm -hmm. I I'm a wrestling fan, so I love all of it. Yes. Um 
So if you're a deathmatch fan, you can look up just death matches. If you're an AEW mm -hmm. fan, you can watch this AEW. If you're a WWE fan, you can watch WWE. You know, like there's mm -hmm. so much out there. Yeah. You can watch everything. Oh, yeah. And then there's also those promotions that literally have a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like one thing, one thing I kind of like about, uh, well, GCW, for example, they have the death matches. I mean, most of their matches have some sort of a, like a hardcore element, but there's literally a little bit of everything. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's one thing I definitely tune in to them for, because I, I like that grittiness, that intensity, which is one thing that kind of drew me to you is the intensity that I saw in you in Ring of Honor because my, I have YouTube TV and I was able to just search professional wrestling and uh, before uh, Sinclair stopped it here recently, I was literally every week watching those those shows that you didn't have people at and I, I was doing my best to keep up with it i mean sometimes better than others but you know yeah yeah um uh, harley always taught us to be intense you know um and i i hit hard and get hit hard so <laughs> that, that's just the way i am <laughs> that's the way i was brought in i mean look at harley race he's probably the toughest son of a bitch you ever gonna meet you know and and he passed it on oh, all, yeah. of us, all of our solvent students you know be tough you have to be Wrestling is not an easy sport. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, everyone yeah. compares it to gymnastics and all that. Well, I don't know how many gymnasts get, you know, if a clothesline goes wrong, you break your neck. Like I get a flip goes wrong, you break your neck and stuff like that. But I mean, they're landing on like mats, like we're landing on a ring, yeah. which is wood and steel, you know, like I yeah. always challenge people. If you think the ring's soft at a next show, walk up and touch it. And tell me how soft it is. Yeah, no, nope. that's one thing I definitely kind of get in discussions with when, you know, as a wrestling fan, you're bound to get somebody that comes in with the, well, you know, that stuff's fake, right? And I'm like, you go try falling in that ring and see uh, how fake it is. Yeah. Because I've, I've done a little bit and... Yeah, I was walking funny for a few days after that. Oh, yeah, I still I'm, I'm walking funny now, man. <laughs> 20, 20, <laughs> going on 23 years of abusing my body. So, <laughs> um, it, going along that aspect, um, with you know, people kind of underestimating how going through training for wrestling and you know, all the years in the business. What were some of the like hardest aspects of going like through the ropes, so to speak, pardon the pun, with the uh, training and you know going into all the all the shows? Um, nothing was really hard, you know, because I I just I, I fell in love with it right away. Um, yeah, I think the the hardest part is just like getting your name out there and, and having thick skin. Cause you're going to hear mm. no a lot. You're going to get yeah. called names. You're going to get beat up, stuff like that. But that, you know, you just, you learn to deal with that and you just yeah. kind of move on, you know, um, you have to no, market no, yourself. You have to move around. You have to get out of your comfort zone. I know people struggle with that, but that's them. Me. I didn't really have a hard time doing that. Uh, training, you know, I, I, I'm a perfectionist where if you yeah. tell me I can't do something, I'm going to do it and I'll work as mm -hmm. hard as I can to do it. You know, I was the guy that was at first at camp last to leave the building type thing. Cause I just wanted to yeah. work on stuff. You know, I wanted to be the best I could. I want, I wanted this as my job, which I got, this was my career, mm -hmm. you know, um, being no, away from family you. sucks. You know, I no. missed a lot of yeah. things. Um, but because of, ring of honor i was able to see things too you know um 
Yeah. Like my daughter, I got to see my all my kids graduate. I got to see my sons graduate basic training. I got to move my daughter into her college mm-hmm. dorm. You know, I got to do stuff like that. So it's yeah. just, you, you learn to deal with it. Yeah. No, and that's one thing, especially, I mean, you mentioned uh, watching the graduating from basic training. Um, myself, having gone through the Navy, I mean, Navy veteran, people will often ask me about like, oh, did you, did you like it or this or that? And I would always just say, you know, like any other job, there was aspects that I liked aspects that I didn't, but I got to see parts of the world that I more than likely would have never got to see without it. Like I got to, I got to go to Singapore, Thailand, got to go to Israel, got to, got to go up in the middle more countries in the middle east it was just definitely it was definitely hard work like like professional wrestling you know all the bumping in the matches and you know injuries you could go through and you know the other aspects you know missing things with family but like even you said you got to see and do things that who knows if you would have got to do without it. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I'm, this has been my dream since I was seven. I'm living my dream and, and I've, I've seen the world, you know, I'm still seeing the world. Um, because of professional wrestling, I was able to put my kid through college and buy a car and buy a house and, you know, but it, it's, it was still the hard work and determination. And, and my kids, they always look at this, Oh, dad's at work. Like, it's just like being a traveling salesman, yeah. you know, but instead of selling you vacuums, I'm hitting somebody with it, you know, <laughs> hitting somebody with them. Uh, that's good. Um, one thing you mentioned about uh, being in a team with uh, somebody and traveling with them. I'm a big tag team guy. Uh, what are some of your favorite matches as far as like, when it comes to tag teams, like who are some of your favorites and maybe some of the matches that they were in? Like guys that I used to watch um, for yeah. tag teams. I was a huge miracle and violence connection, which was uh, Steve Bam, um, Steve, Dr. Des Williams and Terry Bam, Bam Gordy. Um, oh, okay. All their Japanese stuff uh, was just amazing to watch. Uh, I was a Brody Stan Hansen fan. Um, them versus mm. the Funks in Japan some of my favorite matches um the new age outlaws i was a fan of mm. um i liked the the way that they, they brought it they weren't the greatest wrestlers in the world but they were fun to watch um yeah definitely rock, and roll, rock and roll express and midnight express you know amazing tag mm. teams um and i'm, I'm glad this, that i say that i got to meet the rock and roll Spra- express and became friends with them and got to sit underneath their learning tree you know um arn and tully oh. They were two that mm. I'd growing up, I'd watch all the time. The Rockers, I'd watch all the time, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, some, some of my favorites from back then, I mean, obviously, there was the, you know, Arn and Tully, just how intense they got. Um, my personal favorite all time, still to this day, and I regret that I never got to meet either of them, the Road Warriors. Oh, yeah. I just, oh man, what there's, I got to see them live once. And man, I don't think I've ever been on my feet from the time the music hit to the time they went back. That, that night I did. When that, when their entrance and that, oh, what a rush hit, I was yeah. on my feet the whole damn time. Yeah. Yeah. They were fun to watch. They're real good guys. Um, I only got to meet Animal before he passed, um, but I've done shows with his son-in-law, and I've met his son. Okay. Um, what well, like when we're talking about some of uh, the matches that some of these guys have? Do you have any particular favorites? I would tag team. Yeah, the one of my favorites is um, it's a Saturday Night Main Event match between uh, the Brainbusters, Arn and Tully. 
uh, mm. against the Rockers, Sean and and um, Marty, oh, okay. and it it's it's nonstop balls to the wall, go go go, and it's so fun to watch how they do everything. Um, oh yeah, those. they're just amazing to watch. Um, one I watched the other day was um, Hanson and, and Brody against the Funks. Um, all mm. the whole all Japan feud was great because I you know you start with the singles matches between them. Then it breaks down, and then there's a two tag matches, and it finally ends up in just a bloodbath. And it's it, the reason I like that is because this is Terry before he was crazy Terry, so he's still technical wrestler and stuff. But you start seeing the mm. the hardcore side come out of him, the, the Texas side that he becomes yeah. famous for, and yeah. you get to see Brody and Hanson no. actually wrestle, which people didn't think they could do. And then mm. these matches are 45 minutes long, you know, and they're just yeah, you're, you're hooked the whole time. So fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Brody was definitely a favorite of mine. I, oh, I'm trying to remember. I was pretty young when the unfortunate event happened with him. But, like, I still, to this day, I always remember I, I'd see him. And, like, you mentioned with a – seeing him walk by i was just remember seeing that on tv and i'm like oh my god yeah it, and it the way you were with him when you saw him live that was the way i was my first ever wwe show i got to go to where one of the matches was big boss man versus yokozuna oh okay yeah. and my dad my dad got us floor seats and we were like right by the entrance so i'd every entrance i'd be running over there and here comes i'm like in third grade at the time and here comes yokozuna and i'm like this tall and here he comes walking by i'm like whoa this yeah, my jaw big, dropped big big man oh yeah and like we talked about with uh you know yeah. big, big men being able to go he he for a guy like early on in his WWE run, he for a big guy, he he could he could go. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he if you watch some of his earlier stuff, um, before he was Yokozuna, man, he not that he was he was great as Yokozuna too, but he could yeah go, you know, yeah. all the guys back then could because that's the way you were trained. Oh yeah. No, I, I've heard a lot about uh, how hard hitting the training could be back then. I mean, there's uh, how stories from like AWA training and stuff, and Gagne getting people out in the barn and shit. Oh yeah, I've seen that barn. I've unfortunately never been up there to see it. it <laughs> <laughs> um what were some of your like one thing i like another thing i like to ask my guess is what were some of your favorite matches that you've been in and then some of your favorites either other ones that were on shows that you've been in or just as a fan in general so the ones that i've been in um all of my matches with the Briscoe brothers, whether it be mm. me and Brian against them or me and Silas, um, every single match I've had with them was just awesome. They are two guys, you know, you wrestled the Briscoe brothers for like a week after. And uh -huh. I became really good friends with them. We used to go drink beer after the shows. I used to ride with them all the time. They're two great, fantastic people. And the matches were just magic. And it was, it was mm. so fun to work with them. Um, just, I can't say enough about them. Um, a singles match that I had them real proud of is, is I have two, a couple of actually with the two that come to the top of my head, <coughs> excuse me, were me and Hiroki Goto in uh, Japan, um, mm. putting that match together and talking to him and, and just doing what we did was amazing. And then I came back through the curtain and they, they asked me, they're like, can you work? 
you know, the, the next day on that tour, I had to work twice. And it was, it was just, I just remember working with Hiroki because I've always looked up to him because he was, you know, he's my style of wrestling. And then I got to wrestle yeah. him, great match. And the other one was Naido um, in Toronto. Um, mm-hmm. The thing about the Japanese, you have to earn their respect. Um, and yeah. I'm, I got done with the Naido match. And I, it, it, be, I had the Naido match before the Hiroki Goto match, but the Naido match helped me because when I did the Naido match, I got through the curtain. First person I saw was BJ Whitmer. Mm. And BJ comes up and goes, Hey, you, you need to thank him, like extra thank him. I says, like, you know, I, I, I will. And he's like, No, you don't understand. Like, he bumped his ass off for you, and they don't do that for just anybody. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so I thanked him and thanked him and I thanked him again. And, you know, because it, it was so good. And then when I got to Japan, he had must have said something about how it was good. And her, and me and Hiroki went out there and just, I mean, we're both bumping for each other, but like he's busting his ass. Not that he doesn't do it for everybody, but it, like, yeah. Yeah. It was just so amazing. And, and it was in Japan. It was a building that Brody created, that Foley created. And, you know, they, mm. they're led in that building and those are two of my idols and Gordy was there and he's one of my idols. So I'm like, all right, my, my three wrestled here. Now I get to wrestle here. And not only that, but I'm going for their <laughs> open weight championship against the guy that I've looked um, up to for years, you know? Yeah. And just the reaction we had and it was amazing. It was so much fun. And then, and then in uh, Toronto, I just the amount of heat I had beating him up, you know, and, and it was just, it was so fun. That's that's awesome. I big fan of both of those guys. And uh, going back to the Briscoes, um, l- I would love to eventually have them on. He was a huge fan of those guys. But uh, SATs, they very close to them too, and nothing but nice things to say about them. And it's like, like I mentioned, how I like that grittiness, that intensity. Those two are definitely every bit of it. Oh, yeah, they're intense. They from the minute their music hits to the minute they get, even after they get in the back, they're still amped up. And then, then when we go out drinking, we get more amped up. But uh, yeah, like <laughs> when I think of intensity, I think of them because they, them and God is another one. They they're just two oh. in- tag teams. Oh, two of my favorite tag teams right now, both both of those. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually a huge G.O.D. fan. And another thing from my wedding, one of the <laughs> – I joke with my wife about this, but it was one of the few ideas that I really got to do. And you know how they have those pictures of uh, groomsmen and they're like holding out their shirt and it's like superhero logos? Yeah, I did that, but with a God shirt. Oh, nice! Cool. I got one for each of my groomsmen, and we were all wearing that. And they were, uh, Tommy Tommy was uh, retweeting it. And I'm like, oh my god, that is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're not two cool guys. We were supposed to go on a program with them before the pandemic, and it just kind of fell through. Oh, that's a bummer. That that'd be that'd be a match I wouldn't mind seeing. <laughs> we we're hoping for it, Brian and I both, but then COVID hit. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, who, who knows? Maybe there'll be a promotion out there that'll uh, put that one together. Yeah, hopefully, would be one I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, anyways, uh, one thing I like to do to kind of before rounding off the show is you might have seen some stuff like this with uh, Broken Skull Sessions. I'd like to do a little bit of a speed round where I bring up some names of people, maybe a promotion, and you're, you give me your thoughts. Okay. All right. First off, a guy that we've brought up a few times, a guy that I am a huge fan of and to this day, still a huge fan. Mr. Brody. Like Bruiser Brody? Bruiser Brody, yep. Uh, 
do you just want one word answers? Or you want me to tell you my feelings or what? Like, uh, like short little feelings about it. It doesn't have to be one word. Okay, well, he he's the original. He's the he's the original everything. Like he made hardcore fun. He made wrestling fun. Uh, and an inspiration to not just me, but many. I can. Uh, Max Impaler is a big fan. The Homicide was a big fan. Mm. Um, you know, so it's cool hanging out and talking to them about that. But yeah, he's the original, and and mm. inspirational. Definitely, I know. As far as that show, uh, Dark Side of the Ring, the one they did on his killing is like my like it's a sad episode but it's still one of my favorites because just getting to hear all the stories about him yeah i like i said such a huge fan and when i saw that episode come up i'm like i am not missing that yeah no they did a really good job of telling that story and and protecting that you know making, telling it right and doing right by brody no, definitely. I completely agree with you there. Um, another guy we haven't really brought up, but we brought up a promotion in GCW that the guy is synonymous with and how I like the whole grittiness aspect and intensity, Nick Gage. Uh, I only met him once here in Milwaukee. It was for a real brief instance. Um and it was just like a high buy and I don't watch a lot of his matches. Um, but I haven't heard a bad thing about him. I, you know, I'm, uh, I know Tony Deppin real well. He's real close. Well, not close, him, but knows him. Um, yeah. You, you know, and he, and he, him and Brett are doing a really good thing with GCW. Like they're, they are filling that niche, you know, um, mm -hmm. especially during the pandemic, they stood out. Yeah. You know, and I think Nick Gage, be in the face of that company for so long as we'll put it there so oh definitely and one thing i kind of like to like in gcw2 is uh if they kind of are doing what so many people have tried and uh, fill in that niche that the like original ecw did like the the original ECW, they had a little bit of everything. Yeah. And GCW, I feel like they are doing it right. Like, if yeah. if you're wanting to, like, they're, I'm not going to say they're trying to be like an ECW reboot, but they're about as close to what I feel like fans of that original ECW product would have wanted in the ECW reboot. Yeah, they're definitely doing a really good job in securing that niche that they're creating that that you're right. It, it's a void that's been there since ECW died. GCW's filling that void, which is, you know, good for them. They're they're doing really yeah. well, you know. Um yeah. like I said, they're during the pandemic, they're the one company you can say not just only stood out but grew. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, well, speaking of wrestling during the pandemic, I'll go with a promotion here. One that, like we mentioned, you're synonymous with ring of honor. Uh, uh, best time of my life. Best seven years I ever spent was, was ring of honor. They working with Hunter so closely working with all the guys in the locker room, like a Jay Lethal, Matt Taven, the Briscoes, uh, Vincent, um, Silas, Kenny King, there's so many names. Then Mandy Leon, I got real close to her because she she doesn't she used to do all the social media and and was always running around, but always had time to you know real nice word. Um, you guys back you know behind the scenes, you had Gator the the uh, cameraman, Mark Brown our director, you had uh, Carrie Silken, you know Pants, Todd yeah. Sinclair. Um, you had Todd, who used to do our travel and stuff like that. The guy named Ryan, who we called Top Guy, who basically, if you needed something, mm -hmm. you went to Top Guy, and you got it. But yeah, I miss it every day. I love it. I love my time there. Uh, it'll always be home. 
I don't care what anybody says. It'll always be home. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I just, I miss it. <laughs> Wait, uh, well, kind of veering off here for a second, but uh, if you got the call to be a part of whatever Tony Khan's vision is going to be for Ring of Honor, if they're going to do TV and all that, I would you say that you would it would be hard to pass that up to be a part of it oh i'd definitely be a part of it yeah i you know um if aew wanted me i'd go just because i love wrestling um you know wrestling yeah. i love wrestling i love being in front of the fans i love everything about it and and it, if i work for aew i'll work as hard as i can if i work for the new ring of honor i'll work as hard as i can but the ring of honor that i know that i that I left. That's the one I was describing. I really hope something yeah. comes of it. But yeah, if they called me, I, I in a heartbeat would go. Definitely. Okay. Um, let's see here. Two ones that kind of round it off. Both were a part of the first class of the uh, Ring of Honor Hall of Fame. One actually made his return and has since became the TV champ, Samoa Joe. I, I've i only briefly interacted with Joe, um, and he was really cool all the times I interacted with him. He, I like I love his style of wrestling. He does the stuff that you don't expect out of a big guy, and, and being a big guy, doing stuff that people don't expect me to do, I really appreciate it. Um, oh, it's yeah. hard not to steal his moves, you know what I mean? He's so good at him, <laughs> yeah. but... Um, He's just, he, yeah, his matches are fun to watch. Uh, when he was on commentary, he was doing pretty decent. But, like, you know, his old ring of – him versus Kobashi, the, the two nights they did in Chicago, mm. I think it was Chicago and New York, amazing. Uh, just uh, – that's oh, yeah. hard-hitting. That's intense. If somebody wants to see a great match, look up Ring of Honor, Joel versus Kobashi. And just mm-hmm. – it's so good. That's when I became a fan of his. Oh yeah, like that. Those matches between the two of those guys in particular. Oh man, some of what got me into wanting to uh, get more into the Japanese style of wrestling is heck. Right now, some of the guys that I uh, I like in particular, w- one of them I feel like is very much that style. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Oh yeah, one of my absolute favorites right now. Yeah, um, I I love right. wrestling with him. He's a oh I, I, yeah. I've been on plenty of shows with him, and I was supposed to wrestle him one time, and he got switched at the last minute, which it happens in wrestling. But yeah, he'd be fun to work. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not least, like you mentioned, another part of that. Uh, first ballot the uh, Ring of Honor Hall of Fame, CM Punk. Um, oh. I don't really have any comments on Punk. Like, Punk is Punk. <laughs> and yeah, I just, yeah, I don't, uh, don't have any comment. I mean, good for him for doing what he's doing. And he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no, no real. <laughs> Nothing good to say, nothing bad to say. I'm neutral. Um, yeah, nothing, and, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like I, I can't. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no problem. I kind of with the speed round. I kind of like to get uh, it somewhat themed after the guests and with you know the Ring of Honor connection there. That's where that came from. Yeah. Uh, anyways, to end the show here, I kind of want to let give you some time to plug any upcoming events and let people know where they can find you so they can uh, follow you. Okay. Um, I can be on Twitter, um, at BCB Winchester. On Facebook, um, the Beer City Bruiser. Instagram is Beer City Bruiser. 
Uh, you can find me on pro wrestling tees.com slash beer city bruiser. And I do cameo. Check me out on beer city bruiser on cameo. And then uh, check out a podcast I'm part of called darkness radio. (laughs) 